All right, everyone, welcome back into another NFL DFS video. Give me a touch on the top showdown plays for the Sunday night showdown between the Minnesota Vikings and also the Denver Broncos. Going to start out with the slate preview, though, the game preview here. It is a two and a half point spread, well, 2.6, uh, 41 or 42 for the over and under. Uh, looking at it, you know, in a weird way, Denver not too banged up in terms of like who would be looking at, which is good uh, for the Vikings. Yes, they are banged up. Uh, Madison currently questionable with a concussion. He is actually expected to play. I don't know if we should be expecting him to play. I mean, the, all the reports are saying that he's going to play. He was a full participant on Friday. I believe he'd be the first player this season to come back from a concussion that was sustained the week prior. From there, Justin Jefferson's still out, but KJ Osborne is going to be back. That's going to lead us to a little bit of a headache for this. So let's go ahead and start out with the Vikings because they're going to require the most time. And so what I mean by that is like we take a peek at the snap counts from last week and we saw Jalen Naylor playing 92% of the snaps. Now that was with KJ Osborne off the field, but also worth noting that Tristan Jackson, who had himself a pretty good game on uh, week nine against the Cardinals, only played in 3% of the snaps. Now, Brandon Powell, I think he's pretty much locked into his role, but he has seen an increase in snaps the last couple of weeks with KJ Osborne off the field so i think kj osborne being back he should instantly get like 80 to 90 percent of the snaps as will addison the biggest piece of like news that we have is that tj hawkinson kind of banged up and so if we see him only play 70 percent of the snaps i don't think that'd be too crazy uh josh oliver would then get a little bit of increased work but we are going to see them try to run out a little bit more 12 personnel uh is worth noting that alexander madison again Played in 44% of the snaps. Uh, Ty Chandler came in and looked really good playing in 44% of the snaps or so. Um, Cam Makers had been someone that was playing about 30% of the snaps to 40% of the snaps. I think that's what we can project for Ty Chandler regardless of that. Now, Ty Chandler in the same situation earlier on this season was only playing you know about 17 percent of the snap he is i think the slightly better runner and i say slightly better i think madison is the more complete running back and so it makes sense why they've been favoring madison better blocker probably just as good of hands ty chandler does have fresh legs though and i think there is something to that he doesn't have the wear and tear from the season just yet and if you look at all the like vegas lines that we have they kind of think Ty Chandler's going to have a good game. Like his receptions was set at 1.5. His rush yards was set at like 34. So they think he's going to be involved. And so right at the bat, like I don't know if we're like trusting Jalen Naylor to get work. Uh, probably not. Interesting play, as is Tristan Jackson. Like I don't think we're going to, going to expect either of those two players to get a lot of reps i think really where we're looking at for like maybe a source of value for this squad is probably powell at 4k a little bit underpriced i would say as long as he's still playing over 50 percent of the snaps i think he's going to be a good source of uh, productivity for us um especially if maybe the running game isn't as good like denver their defense has been a little bit better as of recent uh powell to me you know, his role should be locked in. I will say KJ Osborne, probably a little bit too cheap. He had been someone that had been extremely consistent once uh, Jefferson was off uh, the field, once he was out. And then against Atlanta, you know, seemingly was having a decent game. So KJ Osborne, certainly a cheap price tag. And then from there, I don't know exactly what to do. You know, we probably do want to play one of these running backs, but at the same time, I don't think we want too much exposure to the Vikings, like overexposed. Dobbs is pretty high priced. I'm not saying that this is wrong. Um, he has had a few throws over the last couple of weeks that should have been picked off that I don't know there's this is like the Case Keenum thing all over again he's a better Case Keenum don't get me wrong but where there's just like some throws that probably should be picked off that haven't you know obviously against the Saints it's kind of what I'm referencing there uh, with Keenum but Dobbs has played now he has gotten like third and longs fourth and longs via his legs I don't know if that's something we can like bank on now we do have a big enough sample size to the point where he is rushing the football a lot and he's going to continue to do that he probably does have a safe floor especially against Denver <laughs> We probably do want to try to fit him in, but then it like given the value that we have with Minnesota, it does feel like we're choosing between TJ Hawkinson, who we probably do want to play or Jordan Addison. Now, Jordan Addison, I actually price tag as well. A little bit touchdown dependent feels like in this game. I think I'd rather go with KJ Osborne and then uh, Powell as well for the Vikings. And now we're going into Denver. Looking at Denver, we know that they're going to try to get Javante Williams the football. He had 21 carries, four targets, so 25 opportunities last week against KC. 27 carries, three targets. And they certainly found something here that works. Like they noticed that, hey, we give Javante Williams around 20 opportunities. We're getting three straight wins. And don't get me wrong, like Josh 
Josh Allen made some stupid mistakes, but this Denver defense has played better recently. So I do worry about being overexposed to the Vikings. Although again, I think the value is there. Um, if this game stays close, like I think it will, I do think we're going to see Javante Williams have another pretty solid game. So I have been trying to fit him into my builds. Uh, the issue is that we're going to probably run out of salary. Uh, Russell Wilson, I feel like he's a little bit overpriced, just a little bit. Like he has been extremely efficient in the touchdown department and we could easily take away that Cortland Sutton touchdown. Like it was so close to being out of bounds. And I was almost shocked that they that the play didn't stand. All in all, I, th I think everyone agreed the correct call. But you take that away. It's only 14 points in that game. Uh, we can see he's not throwing the ball that much um, and not even getting that many yards as well. He has been being productive via rushing the football now the vikings are a team that does blitz a lot so it's weird like i do think they're going to get home on wilson a lot but at the same time because of that wilson should be able to pull and run it up the middle at least once for a big gain um like if there was ever a game in which wilson's gonna have a good game and javante williams isn't gonna have a good game i think it's this game and vice versa um do you want to favor wilson over javante williams it's maybe a little bit thin but i do like the fact that we can stack with wilson a little bit easier so maybe i'm going with wilson a little bit more and then we could probably tack in maybe one of his other pass catchers and i want to point out the snap counts for the denver broncos so we look at it Troutman is getting so many snaps and just not being used we have seen them kind of go to a little bit more of a 12 personnel there uh with you know two tight ends Jalil mclaughlin is someone i thought would get more work we have not seen that happen p ryan is locked into his role it seems like he's the third down back change of pace back uh mclaughlin will probably get a few touches but for the most part p ryan is third down back he can get used in the receiving game and like javante williams still only played 50 percent of the snaps so that to me is a little bit risky and so i do want to call out marvin mims has seen the snaps go up and judy's has slightly gone down i do think the squeaky wheel gets the grease like we might actually see marvin mims have a good game there's a little stupid social media comment about uh i need to get the ball from wilson which is to me kind of a toss away comment every receiver is gonna say that that you know they should be getting the football but given how many snaps he played i I think there could be something there and so I really don't mind and this would be risky to do but I don't mind like being on Marvin Mims like I'm not saying play him in the captain spot that's too risky uh, but I don't mind kind of the structure of a build like this and then that's that's really kind of it like Denver's I think a little bit easier Cortland Sutton I think is a safe play I also think he's a little bit priced up I'd rather get to KJ Osborne at his price tag now here's a situation where if you are going like let's say TJ Hawkinson in the captain spot then I'd be kind of fine getting to uh Javante Williams as a flex or even Jordan Addison for that matter but like that's how I'm going to go about navigating but that's going to be all for this video uh, thank you guys for watching make sure to give a like and subscribe I'll, got, I'll have you guys covered here with the Monday Night Football game hopefully tonight I'm hoping to get the video out tonight uh, if not it'll be out tomorrow morning thank you guys for watching uh, let's have a good slate and as always let's keep cashing